Yes, there you go. Perhaps in... They might have that EPS in that, ooh, Benedetta. Wow. So perhaps from that final blow, but there you go, Benedetta coming into play here. So fast, Again, this is very so fast. fast. And we all know, Benedetta, Kabuki on a Benedetta is just so fast, and he is so good on that hero. So I feel like he is still confident taking on the composition. Well, speaking of the composition, over a fire, Karina needs to find the right target, either targeting Clint or Kadita. Apart from that, I feel like Kadita should not just, Karina should, should not just go Ham, you know, go all in using yeah. that shadow salt. So I feel like targeting will be important for the side of our uh, Aura's composition. I guess the idea with the drafts coming in from Aura is that they don't want to give Bigatron a clear target for who they can actually burst down really quickly, which is why they didn't want to go for an MM, a particular MM in yeah. the gold lane position, knowing that all the heroes that they've chosen with the Mardis, with the Benedetta, Karina, Esme, and Yves, these are actually heroes that are very difficult to just burst down, especially with the high escape mechanisms that they have. So I guess that's what they're trying to do, but in terms of DPS, that's going to put them in the high end. Yeah. No. Both of these compositions have a very, very set win condition, but it's time to just jump in the Land of Dawn through the portal and get to the game. Everyone in chat right now, hashtag BTR win or hashtag Aura Fire. Show us what you guys got. Support your teams because this is going to be a very interesting matchup from both of the teams. Again, Kadita is going to be the one roaming. So he's going to be the one building the roamer item. Godiva, as usual, already being such a nuisance here inside of the enemy jungle. Max, though, going in for more. Godiva forced to back away, pops the regeneration as high, will be the one who picks up the first little wander. Yeah, it feels like Bigatron actually anticipated the movements coming in com from Godiva because you could see the really quick response by Key as well. And that was actually on one of the winning conditions from the side of Bigatron Alpha is to be very aware of Godiva's movements because that's exactly how he likes to play and that has not changed since Season 8. Yeah, I feel like Aura Fire here playing it very, very aggressively. Take a look, already invading the jungles, Fluffy already delaying the rotations for Max. And that's, that's a team here. Oh my god, there's a play. Yeah, there's a play right here. It's going to be Bigatron Alpha trying to zone away the members of Aura. Because Aura Fire, how will they maintain that pressure and how will Bigatron resp respond for that pressure? Will they be able to de delay or I feel like will Aura just gain advantage from the get-go? Ooh, but it look, seems like Aura Fire has actually walked up to the enemy jungle. Key is showing himself, just playing with some water, but it's going to be high jumping onto him. He will be able to knock one person off, but it's going to be the knock off as well, connecting onto Key, and that's high, picking up the first blood by Samsung Galaxy A series. We can already hear a little bit of screams from the back, from the players, because Aura and Bigatron, not only are they two very similar teams when it comes to creativity, but also power and, I don't know, adrenaline on the stage. Man, Mirko, those screams are insane right now. And now Aura Fire, because they were able to take that, they are now actually able to dominate in terms of objective. But wait a minute, they yeah, there's a level four. There's a car crash at the bottom side. Kabuki will not be able to pick up a kill there, but it's going to be Godiva stepping in, trying to buy a little bit more time, clear the waves as well. But it is still a one for one on the board, though Aura Fire, they were able to pick up that turtle. Yeah, 100%. They are able to pick up that turtle. And now they are kind of winning in terms of rotations, but they still have to be very careful of the rotations from the side of the Kadita as well as the Johnson. Because if Aura Fire, they want to play more objectively, let's say they want to take a tower, they have to be careful to get picks off in instead. But whoa. Wow. So for now, I feel like Bigatron and Aura Fire, they are slowing down their tempo. Aura Fire finally reciting their uh, pressure because again, the level four power spikes has come through for us out of Bigatron. So Aura Fire, what will they go for here? Will they stay proactive or will they somehow find uh, other things, you know? Yeah. It is going to be very important for Godiva as the Martis to be able to bait, but wait a minute, a pickup happening. Yeah, Rainbow goes bottom side trying to go for the pick, but it's going to be Key actually going for the Petrify oh. and instantly Kabuki showing what he has here in terms of mechanics. The eye for an eye, very, very well timed to get out of Rainbow's crash and also to get out of that Petrify stun. Yeah, it was interesting is that the... Yeah, I feel like it's so interesting to see the ro rotations coming from outside of our fire. Again, a Bigatron, they are... Already in that power spike, but there is just nothing. No yeah. setup, no clear setup. And Aura Fire is still in control map-wise and as well as economy. 
Too much mobility, I feel like, from the side of Aurifier right now, and too much anti-CC. Godiva is one of the purple people who can just basically walk out, walk in anywhere, and he's not going to be punished. But Ooh, Fluffy, you know, I was about to say this, Fluffy usually likes to roam, and Key can definitely punish that. That's exactly what happens here, and that might be really, really bad timing, because remember, right now, the turtle has spawned. This is turtle number two. High, though, he is at a two-level advantage when we're comparing him to Max, and this might be, yeah, another free turtle uncontested for the side of Aurifier, but Kabuki now dashing in onto Max, will be able to zone him away, and boom, bang, bada bing, there's nothing Bigatron Alpha can do. Yeah, you could see that the Johnson actually went back to recall into the base. I think looking for something especially... It's going to play an, like a very, very huge role in this game. It's going to be a huge factor onto who will win the first game as well. So what do you think? Right now, High is two levels above Max. I mean, technically now only one level, but he's going to hit level 9 much faster than Max. Renbo, though, he jumps in and again, Godiva with the smartest pick. It's just a very genius move, but it's going to be Max jumping in with a knockoff strike. Not able to connect onto him fully, but it's completely fine because the Retribution will be able to pick him up. And there you go. Like I said, Hai hits level 9, and that's a 1 for 1. No, 1 for 0 trade, but Hai does get a few jungle creeps in Bigatron Alpha's jungle. Now, the issue at the moment, I feel, is a real world manipulation coming in from that Yves, because even if Bigatron Alpha, they want to look for pickoffs, they want to go in, especially with so many melee heroes, it's going to be very difficult for them to mobilize, especially inside that. But look at this, it seems like Fluffy's caught in a bad situation. Yeah, it's going to be the way the Dragon bringing Fluffy back to the team. He's going to be taken down right now. High looking for a trade, jumping onto Repo. The knockout will be able to collapse onto High, and that is going to be the follow-up from Bigatron Alpha to take Fluffy down with High as well, who tried to go for a trade, but in the end just overcommits. And now it's Bigatron Alpha taking the lead in kills, not just yet in terms of gold. Oh, seems like our fire are actually kind of, you know, starting to make some mistakes here on the board. And that's not exactly something that you want to do, especially against a team like Bigatron Alpha, as we're going to take a look at the item. Okay, Dominance Ice will be built soon for Repo here. But our fire with Esmeralda in hand, they, I feel like Fluffy could respond with an Oracle. But Hi already building up that Thunderbolt. And take a look, three members, Fluffy, Hi, as well as Kabuki, already building up that Dreadnought Armor. Already built Dreadnought Armor, so respecting the potential damage from Repo, Max, and as well as Matt. Yeah, it seems like Bigatron Alpha now, they are looking for something, especially knowing that the turtle is around the corner. But if we take a look at map pressure, Aura Fire actually has it. So very interesting to see. And now Fluffy might be the next target, but he will be able to get away, I feel, uh, easily. Yeah, Fluffy gets away right there, goes in for the following Simon actually onto Keeper, the knockout will be able to connect, and that's going to be the burst coming in with a knockout strike as well. Fluffy somehow still survives, but not for long. He's going to get taken down in the end, but again, they're trying, they're still trying to trade sides on the map. Aurifier were able to pick up the third turtle of the game, and now they pushed up to the top side. But Renbo has made his rotation up top as well. It's going to be the base actually Whoa. here into the turret. Kabuki tries to get away with the eye for a night, but Max comes in with the killing spree, and there you have it one more time. Bigatron Alpha, not only were they able to defend that turret, they were able to get two for the price of none as well. Uh-oh, things are looking shaky as well as scary for the side of Aura Fire. What they actually built from the early game is actually slowly being taken away from them. And this is something that is a pattern for the side of Aura Fire. They like to go in for these chaotic pickoffs, this chaotic mess that they like. The pattern is there, and Bigatron Alpha is actually able to read on what they want to do and capitalize over it. Yeah, smart play there from Godiva top side. He just pushes the minion so that two members from side of Bigatron could not push the turret. So again, a small but very, very critical micro play coming from side of Aura Fire. For now, Bigatron, they seem to, uh, they are pro more proactive, and I feel like now Aura Fire could not just give pressure. They need to play more responsibly rather than proactive here. Yeah. yeah. One of the big reasons they were able to win in that early game was because of that laning phase. But Repo now is going to step in onto three people inside of that bush, will just be able to shun pull away, and both teams just waiting for that Lord to spawn in 30 seconds. The thing is, Repo really likes to play for the aggressive type of laning, but the problem is that he gets actually quite disrupted every time that he wants to make 
a huge play, but that's exactly what he wants to do. But whoa! Yeah, Renbo collapsed onto Face Hugger right now with Key going in, and that's gonna be the knockout. Rough waves will be able to finish him off. He goes in for more. Renbo's gonna be the target, but it's gonna be Max joining in the fight. Goes in for the knockout. Strike on the high. He picks up the kills. The yells of the robots start coming in, but it's gonna be Kabuki trying to look for the outplay with the final blow. He buys a little bit more time, but it's still a two for zero for the side of BTR. Kabuki's waiting in the bush. Max will be able to find him, but not going to overcommit in the mid lane. Repo has been pushing in those waves and has been able to take that turret down to a quarter of health. This is huge for Bigatron Alpha. Look at that gold just completely shift to the hands of Bigatron Alpha or a fire. They are actually getting quite a surprise by all the pickoffs that this Johnson as well as this Karita can do, especially when Facehugger is the brunt of it all. If he is the victim, it's going to be very difficult in terms of team fight. but look at this. Yeah, another team fight again. Final blow to the backside, still able to buy some time, but it's going to be Max on point, getting in, but eye for an eye, instantly taking him down. The shutdown is picked up. Key just dashing away, baiting some time. It's going to be perfectly timed as Godiva will not be able to find the execute onto Renbo. Beautifully placed rough wave from Key to knock him up right as he flickers in. Yeah, and if you notice, Repo was actually trying to land his his skills on to uh, one of the members from Aura Fire in Facehugger, but unfortunately it actually missed, so instead he was the one to get picked off. So a little scattered, I'd like to say, for the side of Bigatron Alpha, very different to the previous team fights that they did. And now Aura Fire, they are trying to catch up in that gold deficit. Oh, Renbo jumps in on to high. He's going to be knocked up. He's going to be chained CC, but the team is there to save him. Key with the rough waves will be able to bounce away, but still, that is the Lord taken down. Very much worth it for the side of Aura Fire for now. Okay, now for looking at the situations here, Aura Fire. They, they, they responded and take a look at the gold. It's just so solo. Oh, there you go. A pick off. Again, a Bigatron showing what oh. they can. Yeah, there you go. Repo goes in for the way. The dragon, there's just so many fights going on as the final blow will be used to the backside. Matt cannot kite for long. High and Kabuki will be able to take him down as Facehugger pops the real world manipulation to lock Repo down into that top side. But in the bottom side, though, Bigatron Alpha still looking for some trades as Fluffy is going to go in for a 2v1 play. We'll be actually able to zone these two members away. He might even go for a dive here with the help of Kabuki. We need to see Kabuki. He knows where he is, he's gonna go in, but it's gonna be the knockout and the rough waves to finish him off. Kabuki versus Ki! And Kabuki gets the killing spree outplay on to the Kadita. What the heck? Insane mechanics by that Benedetta, by Kabuki on the Benedetta, because you know, if we were playing that what? one shot by the rough waves and you're just out, but he just outplayed Kadita like insanely. And now he's actually able to give more pressure for his teammates now that they we are entering the 12th minute. Wow, entering what? minute number 12 there. The outplay, I feel like he was ready. I think he calculated the uh, movement there for the front side of the key. Now, taking a look at the items once again. A high building all defense here. On his way towards dominance eyes, I feel like. But Max is already on that Malefic Roar. So expect more damage penetration from that Paquito or a Fire, though. They are playing this very, very well here, responding to that Lord. And now it's a total reset. It is still a stalemate here for both of the teams. Anything can happen. Yeah, and they have to be careful because Bigatron Alpha, even though they are like this, they are so hungry, guys. Ooh. So if you guys that are watching right now are hungry as well, you can go ahead and check Grab Food because there is a promo code MPLIDX Grab, which can give you a 50% discount. Now, as I was saying, Bigatron Alpha, they are still in the game. They are still staying relevant because they are looking, still looking for objectives. So while Aura Fire was very busy in the bottom side, Cho was actually able to get a tower in the top side. So Aura Fire, they need to be careful of these things because objectives in the later stage of the game are going to be very important to their winning condition. And this is why Cho is such a good pick against Aura Fire's composition that really wants to just scare you and go for that one shot. Repo can just open up these these bushes so, so well with the Shun Po, with the Jeku Kundo as well. And that's going to be amazing because Renbo, he's coming in with a flying space hunter. He's going to get caught right there, but the real world of the will be cancelled away. Rough waves in the Breath of the Ocean connecting on a three. Now with the combos coming in as well. Keys by so much time. Breath of the Ocean on the three. Max goes in for the combo. Wombos. Matt goes and deals some damage. Guns them down in the back. Go Diva trying to get 
away, but it's gonna be Max coming in to shut him down. The twin power coming in strong here in the 13th minute of the game. Fluffy is running for the hills. The mid lane turret will fall as Max picks up the purple buff here before they put their focus onto the enhanced lord. Three members taken down for the price of one, and now Bigatron Alpha, with the space that they had from that previous team fight, will be able to take this enhanced lord into their hands. And if you totally looked at the team fight that we saw before, you could be it was very, very evident that Matt was he was hitting so freely. And I don't understand what Aura Fire was doing. I guess they were a bit busy, bigger getting picked up. And unfortunately, Matt was just free hitting from the back, being able to deal all the damage that he could as we take a look at the instant replay by the Samsung Galaxy A series. It's just a um, very, very good execution here coming from the Bigatron side. The synergy was there, the coordination. The skills were not w uh, wasteful here from side of Vigatron. Try and take a look at the, it's just the synergy was on point. Aura Fire could not withstand and they, uh, it catches Aura Fire off guard, that team fight. We need to mention how Key played that, man. He went in with Rainbow here at Eterna, but the thing is, he was picked off first. Before he was picked off, though, he was able to pop that Breath of the Ocean, getting that three-man knockoff before he gets taken down. Repo now in the bottom side, doing what he can, taking down the turret as three waves will be pushing in to Aura Fire's base. What do you think? Dude, what do you think their odds are if, these talk, if we're talking about a fight inside of their base? If Aura Fire continues to underestimate what? the pressure that the clan has. It's going to be chaos, but whoa! Yeah, he jumps in onto high. We'll be able to deal some damage. That's going to be the rough wave. Just distracting, distracting the enemy members. Rainbow gets a stun on the two members. Still able to distract them for now as Godiva looks for a re-engage. Real world manipulation going to be used to lock them down. Key's going to get taken down right now as that's going to be the falling inside mode connecting onto Repo. He's still able to back up with the shampoo. High dealing some damage. Way the dragon to buy some more time as Matt will be covered by Repo. They're still looking for more though. Kabuki is Hungry. He's ferocious, but in the end, they'll just stop after those two kills onto Key and Renbo, losing one base turret for the price of two oh. members. Fun fact here by Grab that if MBLID. Oh, okay. Kabuki's favorite hero in this current MPL season is Fanny, but. In last season, his favorite hero was Benedetta. So it kind of makes sense, like his rotations, his micro and macro skills. We can see him outplaying the Kadita, even though Kadita is built for that burst type of uh, damage. He was actually able to outplay it, and it kind of shows. Turns out that's his uh, natural hero. That is his natural hero from Season 8. Again, showing here in Season 9. So as it stands, minute number 16 here, Bigatron Alpha still with the lead. And I feel like they could just go crazy here. Take a look at the stats. Rainbow with 12 assists on on his name. My god, almost 100% kill participation and two purifies are on the board for a side of, a side of our fire. Doesn't mean, doesn't, uh, it's not, it's a no problem for a side of Bigatron. Yeah, it's very confusing to see what's going on because I thought that with so many anti-CCs, in Aura Fire's arsenal, they, were, they would actually be able to withstand the pressure that this Johnson and Karita duo can actually have. But unfortunately, I think they, Bigatron Alpha can read the situation really, really well, can actually be, make sure that what they do hit, it hits and it's effective, and they can actually win a team fight for themselves. Yeah, I feel like the only way Aura Fire could turn this around is if and only if they could take down Clint in the early team fight. So it is going to be a tough t a job, but if Ken Aura can make that play, Aura could just turn this game around. It's Jakarta Drift here, man. Big Chun Alpha. That's that's what I want to call this composition. Jakarta Drift. All right? Wait, what, what, what do you guys think? Because I, I'm feeling it. It's a Kadira with a Johnson. So we need... Is it the Bali Drift? <laughs> Why is it a Bali Drift? Because he's, she's an ocean thingy-majiggy. Oh, uh, thingy-majiggy. Yeah. It's, it's a Java Drift. Yeah, so technically, right? So That's a it's Java Drift, man. It's a jo Java Drift. Java Drift. I like that. Java Drift sounds be sounds good. <laughs> we're we're going to stick with that for now. But Renbo, try to look for a pickoff. Onto Fluffy, we'll be able to get the stun down. Petrify will not be able to connect right now. But because of that, actually, they're going to go for more here. They go in for the ultimate two times. And he's going to be punished. Repo jumps in. Win the backside. They don't have Matt to follow up. And that's going to be three members picked up. Repo still able to dash away. Kabuki jumps in with the final blow. Is able to get onto Matt. No more damage. 
damage right now. Eye for an eye, chasing Matt down, but it's gonna be the twin brother helping him out. Repo now stuck in a bad situation, still has the immortality, but the real world manipulation is gonna be able to lock them down in the end. High jumps in onto Max, still able to bounce away right now, but it's gonna be High getting the kill. Where the dragon has been popped, and that's gonna be another immortality pop. Knock off right connecting on a two once again. Where the junction has been popped. Max and Repo versus the world right now, and that is a base turret taken away by Aura Fire. A lack of calculation from the side of Bigatron Alpha forcing that team fight to happen, and in the end, they will be the ones losing all everything that they built from the get-go. My god, just one mistake and it led up to that. That was an insane, awesome example of the butterfly effect there from the hands of Bigatron Alpha. But fortunately, the two members left standing were able to save off the pressure as we're going to take a look at the real-time win probability presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series. So 64% for Bigatron, but still shifting really, really heavily here. It might shift. It might shift, if especially Bigatron don't calculate their engages well. Oh, oh Repo gets away the dragon onto Fluffy, but again, that's not the right target. He does have the Purify. This is going to be a lot of resources wasted if they keep on using these abilities onto Fluffy. That was what Fluffy was meant to do. They need to get uh, an engage onto High, Kabuki, preferably Facehugger. If they do get an engage onto Facehugger, it's most probably just going to be over right then and there. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what Repo is looking for here, Miracle. It seems like this is the, definitely the calm for the storm and Aura fire they have to keep remembering their winning conditions yeah oh okay Fluffy jumps in for the following Star Moon. Bigatron Alpha trying to open up the map. Repo jumps in onto Kabuki. Still able to dash away with the Eye for an Eye. Getting away safely. Lord, quarter HP left on the Lord. Repo, again, jumping forward. Jumping inside of the bush. Getting the bush control as he's just going in with the Jeet Do, Trying to buy some time. Fluffy jumps in onto the following Star Moon for three members. It's going to be Fluffy kick back to the team, but it's going to be Key jumping onto the backside as well. It's going to be the Lord stolen by Key. The Scream comes in for the Red Bro Boss. When the truncheon is going to be used by by Facehugger, but it's going to be Max Baby coming in for the cleanup, for the finish up, a one for one, but the Lord has been stolen away by Key. Oh no, this is not a good sign for the side of Aura Fire. Losing that Lord as well as two members, maybe three now that Kabuki is caught in a weird situation here and Woo! definitely will go down. This is a win, win, win for the side of Bigatron Alpha as look at that Lord. It is marching down, but unfortunately, they do not have the wave pressure there in the bottom side and will be actually forced to rotate and towards that area. I don't know if I don't know if Bigatron Alpha can end here. They might be able to get one more turret, but look at Renbo. I feel like they they're hungry. I think they might want to go for a team fight here. It's gonna go to the backside. It's gonna be high targeted right now. Repo is the one inside of the truck. He goes in for the way the dragon connecting onto high, but it's all only a bait for the base turret in the mid lane to be taken down. Oh no, losing that is going to be bad for the side of Aura Fire. Only one inhibitor turret left, and the pressure is definitely on them. As Bigatron Alpha, they are still leading in terms of gold. And guys, I didn't realize this is already a 21-minute match. It feels so fast-paced. It is. It felt insane. Yeah, 21 minutes felt like a like a five-minute game so far. Yeah, it, was, it is an action-packed game here in game number one. But let's take a look at the items here. Matt's already full items plus that Scar Scarlet Phantom. So we're looking for that critical chance and as well as critical attack for that Clint. And take a look on the other side here as High already building that Winter Truncheon. So I feel like they are somehow ready for a team fight. If only, again, Aura Fire, they just need to respond. They do not look for engages. They just need to respond from the crashes from Rainbow. I think they need to just bait out Renbo, I suppose, yeah. before they want to engage in a team fight. Yeah. Because if they do that, it's going to be difficult for them to win, especially with so much disable from the side of Bigtron Alpha. And then instead, it's just going to be Matt being able to clean up the mess. And that's usually how Bigtron Alpha wins these team fights now. This is like, again, the gold has just been shifting back and forth. It yeah. was even in the center. Bigtron Alpha have recovered with a 1,000 gold lead, but. Honestly, if we're talking about the game in 20 minutes, it should be everyone with full items. So, does the gold lead even matter at this point, Donny? I feel like it does not matter. Only perhaps Immortal and Winters yeah. could just come into play. Now, looking at the spells and looking at the ultimates, they are ready for a team fight. All abilities are up, so they are just delaying for that Lord. After that, a huge 5 for 5 might occur here for the side of Bigatron and as well as Aura. Again, <laughs> any, any team could win here. Welcome to the Java Drift. It's yeah. Rainbow. 
He, he's, he's just racing at this point. I don't know who he's racing, but he's just racing in his own base, all right? He's waiting for the right moment to strike. Three seconds for the Lord to come out. It's too risky if they go out of the base right now. So he's going to time it perfectly, go in once his team has had a better position. And you know what this does, actually? Usually, when Rainbow pops his ultimate, Key is inside of it. So now that they know Rainbow has popped the ultimate, they'll be thinking that Key will be with Rainbow. They don't know Key is inside that bush, and this yeah. might be a perfect, perfect um, stealth assassin oh, no. kill to get something done, but no, Key gets spotted out. Falling Simon <laughs> gonna be used. Ocean already instantly by Key, but Kabuki needs to be careful. He's gonna get taken down there. It's going to be the, the burn taking down a monster kill picked up. Rainbow goes for the flash, will be able to connect onto High. It's gonna be the winner's front and used. Rough waves in the backside though. Fluffy still able to run away. High jumping in onto Rainbow once more, but it's not gonna be enough damage. Repo will be able to cancel away that real world manipulation. Look at the breath of the ocean from Key. He gets to immortality. Zap and pop, go deeper, running for the hills. Fluffy gets taken down, and Repo goes in for the G Do, a godlike by Paquito. Max and Matt goes in for high. He jumps all around, but the real world manipulation will be able to dome them away once more. Bigatron Alpha still winning this fight, but for how long? High and Facehugger against the world. Will they be able to defend? It seems like they will for a little bit more. Yes, but it seems, does seem that Brembo is on his way too, but. My god, Repo is such a reliable EXP laner. Being able to cancel that real manipulation was huge. But look at how much damage Hai is receiving. Yeah, they're all targeting the base right now. Face are high going for the mini waves, but it's going to be Bigatron Alpha taking match game number one in a very, very, I don't know how to say it, entertaining way, I suppose. Winning it with style. Winning it with style here.